This is Ken Korak of the Oakland A's, and you're watching Bay Area Sports Wrap. Steven, uh, how did the nerves compare for right now compared to your first uh, opening day as a player? Uh, very different. You know, obviously as a player, you've dreamed of that moment your whole life, and you're ready to go, and it's all about you. Um, and now, you know, I've dreamed of this moment my whole life, but nothing's about me. So it's a, it's a lot different, but um, I, similar excitement levels, and obviously being back in Oakland is pretty special. Well, we're going to say it is about you in a sense. I mean, your last at bat here was very dramatic. We all remember it, and now you're coming back to manage at this place. Just take us through your emotions heading the ballpark today. Yeah, honestly, I don't really know what to feel. You know, um, it's one of those things that I don't know what I don't know yet, And uh, but I, I just couldn't be more thrilled to, to be a part of the Cleveland organization and such a great place with good people and we have a great team and to be starting in Oakland uh, for me is, is very very special so this place will always be number one in my heart um, but it, it's just really fun to be back. What was your reaction when you got the job and you look at the calendar and you see Oakland game one? Yeah. Uh, a lot of different reactions but um, you know my wife Alyssa was the one that told me she saw me she saw it and she's like <clears throat> you're never gonna believe <coughs> excuse me you're never going to believe where your first game is. And Oakland is like just confirmation that, one, I'm in the right place. I, I couldn't be more thrilled to be in Cleveland, and uh, we're really excited to be here. Steve, what are sweet, though, Steve, that, you know, Steve, that given the, that the fan situation here has not improved, it's gotten worse. In fact, there's a big boy about playing in part of my beat of it. Yeah, I, I haven't really been too concerned about that kind of stuff. You know, obviously, I've followed the Oakland news closely, and my heart goes out to the fans and the people of Oakland, and obviously the organization as well. You know, they're in a, they're in a tough place right now, and hopefully they all get some answers and some clarity soon. Steven, what's your favorite memory here? Oof. There's so many to, to think about, but, um, you know, the playoff atmosphere here is better than any in baseball, and I've experienced a number of different playoff atmospheres now, but the Oakland Coliseum packed at playoff time, it's, it's tough to beat. And so um, just those memories of those teams and, and also what we went through together as a team here, you know, from being one of the best teams in baseball to, to going through a rebuild to seeing people go, seeing people come. And hey, you become a family here in Oakland, and that includes the fans and the, and the stadium workers. All of the people here in this organization mean the world. World to me, and uh, so I've, I've countless, countless memories here. What do you think when you think of a league that might not have a team in Oakland? I can't really comment on that. I mean, it's, it's hard to fathom, but you know, again, I just. I hope the situation gets rectified soon. Is it a different kind of first day jitters coming out as a manager rather than a player? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, again, like I said, when you're a player, it's all about you and being prepared to do your job, and all you can control is what you do. And now uh, the players are going to go play, and I just got to stay out of their way and let them do their thing. What do you expect your guardians to look like, Steve? Uh, they're going to play hard. You know, this group played hard before I even got here. They played, they're, they're a good, good baseball team. And um, now the same, same guys are here in the same mentality. We've just really buttoned down on a few things that, that we want to focus on. But these guys are good. And, you know, I love everybody's talking about what we're not. No one's talking about what we are. And that, that I like that part. Do you find it kind of odd that you're, uh, you got Ramon as one of your players? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've, had, we've had a lot of good talks. But, you know, it, it's fun to be on this side with, with Ramon and, um, you know, he, he's he's a great player, and I'm excited that he's here with us. What kind of advice, if any, has Terry Francona been able to give you? Be myself. You know, I think, uh, you know, he's been great for me. I've bounced a lot of things off of him, asked him a lot of questions. He's provided himself as a resource to me anytime I need it, and it's kind of nice to have somebody like that that uh, has your back and wants you to succeed. And he wants these guys. These are his players, you know, and he wants them to succeed. So he's been great. I couldn't be more thankful for Tito. How many people from Visalia family and friends you got coming up here? Uh, there's going to be a good good amount, probably 25, 30 people here uh, coming up from Visalia. So it, it's going to be fun. And, again, just seeing a lot of familiar faces and people that I love here in Oakland is, is really special. I mean, we talk a lot. Yeah. No, Ramon's, Ramon's great. He, he really is. He's, he's in a good place. He worked really hard this offseason. Feels as good physically as he has in years and made some swing adjustments as well. So I'm excited to see Ramon. Feel kind of odd you also they're going to be managing against Mark Kotze. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely different. But, you know, the whole adage of managing against, I, I don't really get it. You know, you're managing your team, not necessarily the other team. So, But it's fun to see to see Mark. I, I love Kotze. He was so great to me my last year here and has, has been a mentor of mine and will continue to be. And you're going to bring up the run apart now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you do the basketball referee impression during March Madness? No, you guys? no, no, no. That, it's not about me. It's not. It's uh, I stay in the background now.
How much did you sleep last night? I got 10 hours. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow. I have no idea. Hopefully it either means I'm not prepared at all or I am. So we'll see. No, it, it's been a, it's been a, a process learning how to, to get sleep with this job. I'm sure it's just now starting. But, um, you know, I have so many good people around me, Vinny, that I, I all I need to worry about is me and, and making sure that I'm doing what I can to support the coaching staff, the players. The organization has so many great resources for me. I, I feel very prepared because of the way the Cleveland organization has, has onboarded me into this. One guy you're really close with on your staff is Craig. Can you kind of go back to the no batting gloves, a ball guy. You guys were together before you were today. Yeah, I'll be. Our bench coach has been so special for me. He's known him since 2008. Uh, we played together for a number of years. He's been one of my closest friends for the last 10, 12 years. And to have somebody standing next to me that I trust, that trusts me, that wants me to succeed, and he's one of the smartest baseball people I've ever been around. He's, he's teaching me things every single day. I lean on him a lot. Um, and knowing knowing that I've, I'm going into this with him supporting me means the world. Uh, Brian Rocchio went over the winter playing in Venezuela. was champion there. Caribbean Series played for Aussie. He had what changes have you seen him develop through that experience with, with Ozzy in the winter from other seasons? I know you have kind of some time. Yeah. What growth have you seen from that? Yeah, I mean, I, I only know this Brian Rocchio, and this Brian Rocchio is a champion, like you said. There's nothing like winning a championship, especially with your hometown team in Venezuela. You know, I, I was fortunate to play in the Venezuelan League, and that, that's the closest thing you can get to developing to be a big leaguer is playing winter ball in Latin America. It really is. And so for Brian to go make the adjustments that he did and to now have the confidence that he can compete, um, you know, he I have been so pleased with his camp. Um, he's been a leader for us in the infield, uh, good at bats from both sides of the plate. And so I'm really excited for Brian's year. Since you've retired, can you count how many times you've seen the replay of your final at bat? I can't count, no. <laughs> it, it pops up quite a bit. And um, that's a moment, obviously, I'll never forget. At what point did you want to become a major league manager in your career? You thought this is something I want to go into later on. Yeah, I think probably like 2015, 2016, right, right in there is when you know I knew I always wanted to stay in baseball and coach. I just didn't know in what capacity, and just playing for Bob and watching the way he led us, whether we were the best team in baseball, one of the worst, it didn't matter. He was the same, and uh, knowing that I could do that, um, and then it really clicked in Milwaukee when I when I left here and went to Milwaukee and missed a year to injury. And Craig Council, Pat Murphy, David Stearns, Matt Arnold, they all let me kind of behind the curtain and learn a lot of things that not very many players get to learn. And so really confirmed that I think I can do this and I want to. How do you tell the line, Stephen, between using stuff that you've learned from guys like Bob and Craig and being yourself? I think anybody that thinks that their idea is original is lying to themselves. We all learn from each other. That's how you get experience. And um, anything I've learned, I've, I've taken that and then made it my own. So... Um, you know, I'm going to continue to be me. I think that's the number one thing is just to be myself. And it's understanding that you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes, but learn from them. You know, tell every player, you tell every person in your life, make new mistakes every day. I hope to make new mistakes because um, I know I'm going to make them. What makes catchers great managers? I think it's understanding the game from all, all aspects. You understand the pitching, understand the hitting, um, understanding that everybody's different in this game. And I think catchers really get to know players on a personal level and know what makes them tick. But, you know, as a catcher, you have to make 175 to 200 in-game decisions every night, and any single one of them might win or lose a game. So understanding that there's not a lot of time to make those. You have to be prepared, go out, and, and then watch the game. Watch the game. How different has the speed of the game been for you as a manager as opposed to what you learned behind the plate? It's been very different. Yeah, I got sped up a couple times during spring training, but the best part was recognizing it. And, you know, for a lot of managers that have done this a long time, I'm sure spring training is a sit back and watch, but it wasn't for me. It was I'm thinking through these games like I'm going to think tonight. You know, and Scott Service, one of my biggest mentors, told me managers don't watch the game, they think the game. And I, I took that to heart, and I've been trying to do that every game, and I've gotten a lot of good reps so far this spring. Thank you. Hi, this is the voice of the San Jose Earthquakes, Ted Ramey for Bay Area Sports Wrap. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.